Wow, looks like the YouTube algorithm's not playing my way tonight. Dr. Laptop. Welcome, doctor. 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 Alright. Well, let us see what this is doing before I pull it apart. So, supposedly not turning on, but doesn't mean it's not taking power. A Yankov. Uh, 50... Alrighty, yeah, this is stuck at 5 volts. Let us hope and pray that it's not one of the A7217s, uh, which it probably is, being a 2159. I could be wrong, but I'm fairly sure it is. We'll find out. Let's cut the sucker open. Oh wow, yeah, YouTube's really lagging here in the sense of getting people on board. Typically by now I have nearly a hundred clocked in. Not tonight. Hey Maddie. Seems like an entirely different universe of people I'm getting here. Ali, hey Walter, Walter, with the amount you watch my streams, I wonder if you get any work done yourself. Ooh, I hate doing these, oh, that's better. Mm. You always never know if you're going to be pulling up against something you shouldn't be. Alright, yeah, maybe we might get lucky on this one and it's not the CD3217s. I can see immediately some damage down here, so fingers crossed, fingers crossed everybody, we need the best of outcomes for the customer of course, ah, as opposed to me. Ah, Miles, ah, Jim, you're up and about, I was fully expecting you to be asleep so I didn't message you. Jason. Alright, now we're getting people that I recognise off the top of my head. Okay, we're just going to take this board straight out because there is liquid damage on it that I can see, so there's no point wishing for a non board removal situation. A noosa cat. Yes, my bank accounts are most important. I do tend to agree. Especially after tonight, the car decided to give up. I mean, it hasn't fully given up. But um, there's a... It's an automatic car. And with the gear selector in your center console area, of course there is a cable that runs from there down to the gearbox under the car. Now with this particular car and in fact many cars uh, often the th there's a little uh, a bushing that sort of the uh, the cable comes along and it sort of like expands out to a plastic sort of hub and there's a bushing inside and that bushing goes over a pin which is then levers on the automatic the gear selector Anyway, on these particular cars, it's not uncommon for that bushing to just break, um, decay and whatnot. And so you just have that large ring sort of spinning, uh, just sitting casually on top of the selector pin. And eventually what will happen is you'll hit a bump or something and then that whole cable assembly will fall off to the side and then it won't come back onto the pin and all of a sudden you can't change uh, from reverse to 
park or anything like that. That already has happened on this car and that's already been fixed. But what I think has happened now is that the opposite end, the end that's actually just beneath the selector stick in the console, has gone on it. And unfortunately, that particular end is substantially more painful and difficult to get access to, funnily enough. And the car is currently sitting in a supermarket car park in a very awkward position, so I can't even just limp at home or anything. It's, it's stuck there. So I'm going to have to see if I can rig something even if I've got to get a pair of um, hook nose pliers or something and yank that cable back and forth until I can get it to go into the selection I want. But first I've got to get access to the cable and that's probably going to be the hard part. Hey Eddie Painter, Pierre, Steve, Tony, Travis, Furkin. Yeah, the, the Falcon BA. They're, they're a damn good car. They're a very dependable, reliable car. But, yeah, things do wear out on them. And plastics are a very common thing to wear out. Do, do I need to remove this? No, I don't. No, oh, okay. But I do need to remove this one. Yeah, Walter, I considered actually, because it's currently sitting in the park mode, I can start it. Ooh, that's, that's a long screw with a short screw there. So I was considering getting it started and then getting a stick or something like that and knocking it into drive underneath and then heading back home like that. I still have to fix it up, but God knows how I'm going to, because chances are I um, won't have anything suitable to fix it with. Oh, they're getting fancy now. They've got a hexen up there. Okay. Damn, is that the same as the purple one for the iPhone? Uh, whatever the iPhone was that has that nut on it. I'm talking about in the construction, not the person on the earpiece. I know it's around. Oh, there it is. Yeah. I mean, given the age of the car, it's doing very well. Oh, that driver is too small. Okay. We'll deal with this another way. Much like how I'm going to deal with the Falcon in the morning. Yeah, I'm not sure I want to be curious to see what happens if you try and start it in drive. I think it's just going to be easy for me to start it while it's in park like it is. And then just see if I can get the selector to go my way. With the handbrake on, of course. We don't want any sudden lurches. Yeah, I'm realizing as I'm doing this, I've never done one of this, these models before. I don't know what board this is even. Or do I? I don't... Yeah, this is a, this is a 1598, I think. I'm going to guess this is a 1598. As opposed to a 1958. The 1958s we do not have board view or schematic for. Oh, sorry, we do have schematic. We do not have board views for. But the 1598 we do. Yeah, don't become a wheel chuck. Exactly, Jim. Exactly. We've had a couple of people in this town, funnily enough, well not funny, but who have 
become um, victims of car servicing events. Usually it's the jack fails on them and the car falls on them. That's got to be pretty gruesome. I had the gearbox pack in my old Vauxhall Vivaro. Only way to find it was pretty much what you have there. Well, yeah, the bush went, yeah, yeah. I do not recommend removing hex nuts like this, but um, yeah, when you're me. Damn it. I know where I've got a hex driver that probably would fit this, but I am not taking the trip upstairs. Cracky, that's a pain in the butt to do this one. Almost there, almost there. Anyway, we're very lucky because I've now got the dual cab, the 4x4. Because obviously, you know, um, it was Dad's car. And since Dad is no longer with us, uh, they just sort of said, well, yeah, Paul, you may as well, if you can make use of the car, then make use of the car. And sure enough, I have. Okay. I am really, really hoping this is a short of cap, nothing more. Uh, fingers crossed. I could do with a nice wind today. Hey Francesco, repaired your MRT data recovery PCI Express card. Replaced a TPS 2590. TPS 2590. What was that a linear rig? Was this news account? Oh, someone got uh, squished stealing catalytic converters. Oh, well, that's. Um, that's always poetic justice, isn't it? Okay, anyway, so, well, yeah, look at that. That's... The question is, what is that chip that it's taken out? Mm. Looks like backlight area. So clearly that's going to be a bit of a problem. V regs are all good for the um, sorry the VRAM uh, VRMs sorry folks and I was right it is a fifteen ninety eight oh no yeah, that's weird sorry folks there we go a little out of focus there. Yeah, Australian 1598. Mm. Eight two zero. Yeah, my first ever 1598, would you believe? Hmm. Alright, so yeah, that's trashy bad. I would say the actual damage or the fault could well be whatever's here. It kind of looks like it should be a zero ohm resistor, and I think it's sort of burnt like one of these. Kind of like poor man's fuses.
and these are indeed 3217s. They are probably speaker amps, audio amps. There's enough bits on this board that um, even if it was totally dead, it's actually worth... These boards are worth quite a bit, even in the dead form. Now, best I can tell, it's just this area we've got to clean up. It's actually quite unusual. I've got to admit, I'm a little bit surprised at the fact that it is limited to that area. I'm trying not to get my hopes up too high. High hopes lead to much sadness. Okay, let's go to schematic. What are we looking at? CPU. This, what do you use? Okay, so that's our PPV in G3 heart. So what's this resistor here? 6900. Yeah, okay. I think I'm... What I was saying for that resistor, that's it there. So it's probably burned up. And so we'll probably just need to replace that. And I think the caps will like to be okay. The next problem is going to be, what is that chip that's there? Alright, this could be a little bit more of a problem. This is our RTC clock chip. We may likely have to take this off, re-ball it. Because I have a feeling I probably don't have another one of those. TPS 628180, search, find a part. Eighteen fourteen, which naturally, of course, I don't have. Eight five zero. I might have an eight five zero. Come to think of it, I can never remember if I got an eight five zero or not. Wow, that is wow. <laughs> that needs some serious cleanup. With the house, I did manage to clear out the old kitchenette and uh, clean up some of the dirty water that was around. 1041, 1700. But I didn't manage to get rid of the carpet tax strips in the other couple of rooms yet. I just didn't have it in me today. But we're making progress, and tonight we let the fur kids come into the main area a fair bit more. So it's getting there. It's a little bit frustrating in some ways because we kind of want to just move move down here and feel relaxed, but we simply can't. Not yet. There's a there's going to be a long road ahead. Uh, QFIX Mobile, the program that I was just using the software, that's Flex Board View, which is a product that I um, that I sell. And it's a uh, one-off cost of 139 US dollars. You get two years of updates. And even after that's expired, you perpetually own the software. It doesn't shut down on you. You just keep on using it. But if you do want to get up to the latest version after that, then you can pay a $49 fee and you get another two year block. Okay, maybe that cap there is the one that's faulty. That resistor actually looks okay. Judging by the way this stuff is behaving, I think it might be might be sugar based. It just keeps coming up. Steve K, no, I have not been sleeping lately. 
I think I got two and a half hours last night. That's the other thing, is we so desperately want to be able to get to the comfortable phase so that we can actually get some sleep. Yes, as Walter says, if you don't, um, if you don't make your money's worth on Flexboard View on your first job, then you might want to reconsider how you do your business model. Certainly, your second job, you should make that money back. And certainly, within a week, in terms of the time saved, rather than manually cut pasting stuff. Yeah, I'd say that BGA is definitely going to have to come up. And certainly I think that cap there really needs replacing. I'm going to guess based on the colour of what's been extracted, it might have been Coke. PR, thank you for the £10. That is really nice of you. Thank you very much. We'll either go to the house or the kiddies or more workshop equipment. It'll go to something, believe me. It'll go to something. Thank you very much for that. I do definitely appreciate that. Alright, let's play Find the Short. Yeah, Walter, we are. I guess what I'm saying is that we've been we've been cramped up in the tiny section for so long and for us to be able to recuperate in terms of get our energy to be able to do the house properly and also for me to make a sufficient amount of money quickly enough we need to be able to get into a reasonably comfortable fluid situation with how things are done back and forth. See, at the moment, if we, if I want to come down to this section, I've still got to shuffle through a couple of doors and make sure that the kids don't get through and things like that. We want to be able to at least get to the point where we can, we don't have to do that. I can just freely move back and forth. Once we're at that point, then yes, I mean, we can take our time for the house. I mean, I've already got the back patio being planned to be done and paid for. Well, apparently that's not a short, but that cap definitely has to be replaced. My guess is this, well, my guess now, I should say. Let's see if that's a zero ohm. Yeah, that's still zero ohms. Oops. My guess now is that that chip there is a bit buggerized, and it can't generate the 3v3. And so because of that, it's not turning on. I can only hope that that's why we're not getting the 20 volts on the 3217s. Yeah, Jim, we did good with the back patio situation. Like I said, it's a builder I've used before uh, for a few other jobs. He's very good. Uh, he collaborates with other very good workers. And so we, I've never had any real trouble with any of the work that he's done for us. And certainly he's going to be kept pretty busy. And the nice thing is it should be done, well we should be starting it in the next four weeks, around about four weeks. Oh yeah, that's one very... You can see the junk that was under there. We may be able to clean this up. That's a lot of toffee under there, but... It may be... Able to be resurrected. I'm gonna... Give it a shot, unless I can find an 850 board. Better get that cap off as well. Damn it. Yep, 
Yeah, I know, I know. I saw her knock the other one. It's okay, I'm not blind. I'm just incompetent. Barry West, what the heck? Barry West, that's an extraordinarily generous contribution. Um, what else am I supposed to say now? You know, that's... Yeah, this is great. Hey? I'm going to start complaining about very generous contributions. You always wonder what you meant to say. You always left very much short of words. Because you do want to be able to say how extremely grateful you are because it is someone's hard work unless you're Warren Buffett or something and you can just you know throw a few billion around and no one cares but for the most part you know we all work very hard for our income and so to contribute contribute that always carries a lot of you know uh, Damn it, can't think of the sentiment I want to express. But thank you, Barry. Definitely, thank you. I was going to go down to the shopping centre with my bunch of tools and just... Even the Dremel I was going to take and just start getting into that console. I believe the main problem with the situation is gaining access to the cable assembly itself. See, so with the gearbox side one, it's easy because it's on the underside of the car. You just get someone who's young and slim and dumb to slip under there and install the new bushing. Then away it goes. But unless you've got eel-like hands, you can't do the same for the top side one with the selector. One way or another, I have to get it sorted out by Wednesday because I've got to go to town so to take my mother down to the hospital. She's got to have an eye appointment. The eye appointment, funnily enough, was meant to be about six, seven weeks ago. But there's um, there, were, there were issues pertaining... Well, I mean, yeah, for one, my dad unfortunately died and that kind of threw a spanner in a few things so yeah I'll be taking her down get the checkup done and while I'm down there in Townsville I'll do the proper Australian thing go down to Bunnings and spend a bunch of money I probably shouldn't or can't but realistically yeah there is going to be a lot of money spent now on this house and getting stuff for the house for a liter, I'm going to be getting a power scrubber for the walls because these walls, they really need, they've got a lot of like 20 years worth of caked in junk and I want to be able to make it easier for her to get rid of that and this power scrubber, uh, Ryobi makes it and they seem to be the only one who makes this particular power scrubber or this type of tool so I'm, I'm hoping it's going to be a success. I'm willing to make the investment on it. Because if it works well, then that's great. Because goodness knows the house needs it. Uh, let's see. What's this? Do the download FlexSuite board manual and removing it. I'm removing what, the console thing. Tony W, do you need to remove the center console to access the top end of the cable? Yes. I um, believe you. Apparently, the proper way is you have to actually take the chair out. You have to remove the console. You have to take part of the radio console section out as well. And then finally, you can lift out the selector assembly. That's like. That sounds pretty dubious. I'm sure there's got to be an easier way. Oh, the cable. I'll, I'll see if I can get a camera focused on it. Um, right, what am I looking for? Oh, yeah, I'm looking for an 850 board to see if I can get that chip. No, 
You guys are all 840s, 840. 840. Another 840. I've got so many 840s. I forgot to get myself some 850s. 239. Yeah, like trying to yeah, trying to get into a Windows laptop so you can change the clock um, battery. Some people would really balk at how much I charged to change the clock battery. Because typically it'd be about the last thing that you can get access to. Ah, damn it, I definitely don't think I've got an 850 unless I've got a center portion of one. Which I might actually have. But what's the bet that that part... Let's see, what part is it? TPS... 62180 62180 Ah uh, damn it, 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 the part that I want is located on a wing so very unlikely that But in saying that, I really don't think I do have an 850 anyway. No. That was a pipe dream. Alright, we're going to have to hope that this chip can be reballed. So first course of action is going to be to douse it in some 80-20. Yeah, you're uh, exactly right Tony, it'll be exactly where they drilled the hole in the chip. That happens far too often. See the water, the water and alcohol mix work together and help dislodge a lot of that crap. Jack Bauer, Bauer, ATX power supply doesn't power on. Uh, could be so many possibilities, but usually with power supplies, it's going to be a bad cap somewhere when it's that sort of behavior it's probably not going to be one of the big ones and it's not going to be bulging out it'll be one of the little 63 or 100 microfarad ones that are used for other parts of the circuitry ah shit don't you dare do that I knew you were going to try that James Woods, another £10. No, seriously, I mean, every contribution is always, always appreciated. And you see, the other thing is, there's also the percentages game. Like a person who's a billionaire, if they give you a hundred bucks, then yeah, it's, it's sort of like a pocket link for them. But at the same time, you appreciate the contribution. Whereas the poor person who barely scratches together a meal each day and they give you 10 bucks, it's like, oh, that's extremely 
dramatic relative to what you can afford to pay. But I guess everyone gives what they feel they can. Or It's an awkward topic to talk about, isn't it? Alright, i got to find a stencil that I can use for this. Have you ever had a going on fixing video... I've done... I've done the PlayStation 4 HDMI, but overall I haven't, yeah. Uh, yummy state because I don't have any 1041 or 1700s, but I, l I thought I might have had a part of an 850. And yes, it's very expensive being poor. I know well enough. I lived a good number of years in that state. And it was difficult. Because when I was in South Africa, I certainly was not poor. When I was in South Africa, I was quite the opposite. And I kind of didn't carry that through with the what do you call it, Y2K collapse and stuff like that. And I just sort of burned out and decided, man, I can't do this anymore. And so that's when you find your money just disappears real fast. Ah, oh, sorry, i got to scratch my nose. Alright, we need to get a little bit of solder paste. Not a lot, just a little. <laughs> English Hedgehog, thank you. Fourteen ninety nine pound. It's all pound. I'm getting pounded tonight, am I? Uh huh. Walter White, quick question. Do you know anywhere that I can buy fourteen sixty six foot screen extension? Um. Well, I got mine from eBay, to be honest. So I would imagine eBay still has them. But yeah, that's where I got mine, eBay. So try your luck there. I found eBay these days tends to be a little more workable than AliExpress. When it comes to getting things sent to you. And in terms of speed too, I've noticed. Tomorrow's wow, you're going all wild tonight. Twenty-five. Thank you very much too. What does the leader think of this? She hasn't got much to say at the moment. Thank you very much, Tomorrow's. You're always contributing. And of course, you know people contribute in other ways too. Either telling me what I'm doing wrong, but a lot of people do that anyway. That's way too much solder paste, but what are you going to do? Hey, Flying Scout. Yeah, I'm making bang tonight. way too much paste and I'm going to waste the paste. There we go. <laughs> I find with eBay most of the t a lot of the time they are already uh, let's see a lot of the time you find that they are already AliExpress people so you get pretty much the same results. You pay a little more but you do get much the same. And other than that, I haven't had any dramas in terms of smash packages or anything like that. The nice thing is though, but because I can pay eBay through PayPal, I think that's the other thing is because you can pay them through PayPal, you get a little bit more cautious. Uh, they get, they put a little more effort into it. Uh, 
Ah, shoot. That... Damn it, can I save this? They jumped up on me. Now I've got a problem. The stencil wants to pop, but there's a ball there on the bottom right that is too big. And if the stencil pops and that ball is attached to the chip, then it will actually tear the pad off the chip. Yeah, I may have to redo this. I'll give it a little bit more flux and see if I can get one or two of those balls to settle back down. I don't know why that actually went bad. That really should have been a good that should have been a good transfer. And we can manually place that I like that one ball. Can Mason Byron? So I just want to get one of these balls. This one here might do. Now I've got to find my chip. Oh, there it is. They're actually pretty chunky, those guys. So hopefully this won't be too much, uh, too little. Yeah, too much. play this game. Let's find ourselves another ball. Still too much. Damn it. They're quite it's quite deceptive actually. And yes, this would be too big for me to do the job. There's got to be a ball on this stencil that's suitable. Looking at you, little fellow. Well, it's a little bit smaller than the rest, but I think we can get away with that one. I just want to tilt it up and have a look at the planar. Yeah, so I think that can, that can work. It's not the best, but I think it will work. Naturally, I've lost all sense of what is pin one. It's 
slowly getting there. Pin one, top right, so this orientation is correct for placement on the board. I'm just using 390 and 40 air. It's a very low setting, but it should be enough to make this chip reflow. I think. Yep, there it goes. I think. Yep, it's fluid. Yep. And yes, of course, we do have to replace this cap here. See 6906, 22 microfarad, 25 volts. Mm, it's not a value I normally carry around with me, but I'll have a look. Uh, what size was that? Is that 402? Yep, 402. You gotta be kidding me. I actually have 2225402. What a nice, nice, pleasant surprise. Now, of course, I can get that value pretty much on any other board, but I do like to use new when I can. These must be moderately expensive because I haven't bought too many of them. Usually if a cap is cheap I'll tend to just buy 100 to 500 of them so I never have to buy them again. Or at least not any reasonable time. Okay, same thing, we're not going to use a lot of hot air because we are using leaded solder it hopefully should come good and just drag itself into position there we go a little bit of extra patience is all that was required. Ah, oh, sorry folks. Sorry. Anyway, it's in position. Uh, that's a bummer. I do wish that I could concurrently record all input sources. So, yeah, I am looking at that resistor. It was next on my list. Oh, you're not talking about this. CD711? What's CD711? Oh right, that's the capacitor. Yeah, I'm just going to see what that is. 
It looks dirty, but I don't think it's dead. 10 ohms. Well, at least it should be fairly clear if that's gone high or not. Man, it's fine, 10 ohms. What I might do though is just touch up the end caps. And so if there is a physical defect in it, then touching up the end caps will often reveal that. It's also a fine way to just randomly blob solder everywhere like a lunatic. Yep, definitely dodgy now. More Hershey Kisses than a Valentine's Day. I'm just going to check the other side of the board in that same region. I mean, we do have the Wi-Fi module there. A little more reason that we had to be careful with the amount of heat we used because you don't want balls popping out the side of that one. Uh, it looks pretty good there. Now I don't know if the uh, the USB-C connectors that they use on this board is the same as most of the others in terms of pinout. I'm not going to make an assumption on that. I'm just going to drop this back into the chassis and hope it can be utilized to test. Can't say I'm overly keen on the way that they've put this slotted cable trick here. Just on the, it's um, it's just like begging to be torn, and I guess that's probably the intent. I probably consider it to be a noob detector. Okay, something's not sitting down right. What's going on? Can't tell. <sighs> oh, let's just plug it in and see how it goes. You may or not, you may not read this from that distance, but we'll see. Come on, give me 20 volts. Damn it, you're not giving me 20 volts. Well, that's a royal pain. All right. Just going to see if we are getting the 3v3 out of this. Reading this, 
sorry, I'm just comparing the board view and the schematic and things seem oh okay no I see now yep all good all right let's go to voltage yeah well we don't have 3v3 RTC G3 hot Just gonna see if we get the input. Okay, so we do get the input. So that's at least a good sign. We're seeing if there is an enable on this chip or whether it's just runs by default. Okay, we do have an enable. Which is ninety sixty nine oh seven, which is okay over here. We are being told to do our deeds. So I'm gonna have to guess then that the chip is dead, which is unfortunate. F4 Oh, okay. No, let's see. 3v3, g3, power good. Okay, so it's definitely complaining that it, it itself knows that the power is not good. Hmm. So it looks like the quest for me now is to find a replacement chip. It's a bit of a shame. I'd hope that maybe it was just the, you know, all the candied up sugars that had knocked it off. But unfortunately, it would appear in this particular instance that the chip itself did indeed get damaged. Uh, it's unfortunate. Because it is being told to enable, it has got its inputs, but it itself knows that it's not generating the right output but what I should do first though is to check the diode mode and see that it make sure there isn't a short on the output hey Daniel Eckland uh, that rainbow is due to the alcohol that I put over it when I was cleaning it Point four, point four. Okay, so the two outputs, they're um, point four, so that's perfectly normal. Hey, James, ah, Victor Nia, ni Helma. Okay. Of all the chips, it happened to be one I don't have. Sometimes I do wonder though whether it is out there somewhere on another board, but I've missed the opportunity. You know, miss seeing it. 18, 14, 850. Hey, Electronics Workshop. Ah, Jason's here. Hmm. That's 69.07. It certainly did look like it was attached. I know what you're talking about. I did see the um, little bit of grit there, but it seemed fine. 69.07. Yeah, it just seemed a bit dirty more than anything else. Yeah, so that's that's well and truly connected, that's fine. There's a bit of junk in between them, but I don't think that's got anything to do with anything. Is the Wi Fi alive? No real way of telling, I suppose, until I power it up. That's just a bit more carbonized crap. I don't think anything much will be happening without 
this 3v3 RTC coming to life. So I think we're going to have to just put this one aside until we can get a replacement. The question is, how am I going to get a replacement? I'll just check those zero ohm resistors. I'm sure they're fine, but check them anyway. Yeah, nothing wrong there. Did you test for the proper voltage into that chip? Well, some. Um, uh, this is a 1598 board. I did check for VN. And. I think it was about 17 volts or something like that. Ow. Sorry, a bit wonky there. Oh yeah, this is VN. Oh, sorry, 12.28, so... And if this isn't running, this RTC clock, then it would stand to reason that the SMC probably won't be up either. So yeah, hence my focusing on getting replaced one of these so, so we're not even getting that voltage out we absolutely should be getting that voltage out and it's interesting that you know, when you get your 5 volt only you know, a lot of people will naturally go to thinking it's a CD32 series but we've had a few instances now where it's definitely not that Let's see if it comes up and actually gives us a protocol. Yeah, I didn't think so. So at this point, I'm definitely not blaming the CD32-17s. I'm not going to rip them up. Not until I can at least eliminate that 3v3 RTC chip. I think to do anything else to this board without getting a replacement one of those RTCs would be a foolish option. And unfortunately I just don't have a board for that, U69A3. U69A3. Uh, Barry, the boards that carry that chip are as follows. There you go, you can see them all there. 1814, 850, 1598, funnily enough. 1041, 1700, of which I have none. Certainly one thing I have frequently had the mistake of is to go chasing faults that in areas that are not corroded 
Like you have a corroded board and you go chasing faults that in non corroded areas. And yes, it does happen. But many a time the fault ends up still being in the corroded area. And so based on that I just don't feel sufficiently compelled to waste time, particularly being thirty two seventeens. You know, I feel like I would be it would be a foolish endeavour. Why can't it be on eight forty boards or eight seventy five, damn it? No, it has to be an eight fifty. Ah oh, well. <sighs> So that one we'll just have to sit tight now. It's frustrating, but better than going ahead and doing work that really actually doesn't solve anything. And if more likely, it's going to actually create damage. That's okay. Let's we'll get to the next board. Um, computer rather. What have we got here? Oh jeez. Pro, what are you? What are you? You got a 1398. Okay, I'm not exactly sure what's wrong with it. Bunch of things. I don't think those 3217s had underfill. Hey, RTC. So I'll probably go on to AliExpress or eBay and see if anyone's selling that chip. Because quite frankly, I don't expect I'm going to be able to find any daughter boards that have that chip. And given the proximity of um, where they typically cut the chicken wings and where that chip is, I would say there's a pretty damn good chance if I ordered a wing or a body, that chip's going to be damaged. So I think I'm going to have to go and get one explicitly what am I doing now uh, open it up and find out what CRM ticketing suite am I using my own I suffer severely from the not invented here syndrome so I have a bad habit of inventing far too many things myself. Part of the problem there is also once you start doing that, you tend to, because your business sometimes is a migration or expansion of your existing businesses, you then migrate and expand your CRM business suite and so you just become more and more you just go deeper and deeper into the rabbit hole my laptop says operating system wasn't found I'm a mess that's probably means you got a dead hard drive battery's been replaced which I believe was noted is this a 138 board okay Current development Commodore 64 dot matrix printed Geos ticket. Oh, wow. Uh, oh, I'm glad you got that sort of thing as a hobby. I presume it's for a hobby, right? It's a hobby, right? Uh, 
cat brushing apparatus. I think when it comes to the field of cats, I don't think I could invent anything that hasn't already been invented. Uh, this okay. I'm reading the backstory here. Trackpad was occasionally having issues. After research, removing the back cover turned out because the battery was inflated and probably took out the flex or something. The trackpad ordered a battery from iFixit. Attempted the replacement. MacBook has not turned on since. Ah. Okay. Fan spins when plugged in. Catwalk's button comes on. Tried a few different resets. Not what and have been able to get the Apple login noise. Oh, okay. But nothing appeared on the display. And the display has been confirmed as being okay. The only visible visible damage screw okay oh yeah that's right it's um popped up now I remember now this um screw hole popped up is it on a 923 nope it's not on 923 nope or a 239 because I've got one of those. Alright, so someone's done the battery replacement. Something went wrong. Uh, this popped up, but looks like it's that's just a solder disconnect, so that's not really probably going to be an issue. Let's have a look over the board before we take it out and see what's going on. Alright, I think I can already see it. Something went kablammy there. I would say that's probably a dead inductor. Now yeah, that's not really what you want to see. I'm pretty sure that's meant to be close, you know, nearly one or less. Uh, what board is this again? Oh, I didn't check. Where are you? 3662. Ah, oh, of course. No wonder I was all over the place with what I was thinking it was. Right, yeah, 3662. I'll just update the data on this board. Eight two zero three six six two. Get the board view up. Bum, bum, bum. So this is it here, all eighty three hundred. Yeah. Wait, what? You can't be a dual, you're a single. Ah, right, I've just realized now what's going on there. That's FL eighty three hundred, which is a two port balanced filter. We want L8300, which is this one. And let's see, the 220 ohm, that's at whatever frequency they're rating it. Needless to say, it should not be as many ohms as it is. It definitely something went wrong with that. So we're just going to have to replace it, and maybe we might get something back. That was pretty lucky unfortunately it's I'm still probably gonna have to take this board out because I can't very well get in there cleanly yeah maybe I can get it out but I can't really get it back in cleanly and it'll give me a chance to see if anything else has gone kablammy 
during the process. So. The 220 ohm is the impedance, not the actual resistance, not the um, linear resistance as it were. The real resistance as opposed to the uh, imaginary resistance in terms of mathematical imaginary inductance. <sighs> Good tech would just jump that inductor. Well, I guess that makes me a great tech because I'm not going to. Yeah, I'm a little worried there's going to be more to be found, but which is why I'm just proceeding with this. But it is possible that maybe the battery was connected when they connect the screen. I'm kind of amazed that the display connector is not damaged. So I'm kind of holding my breath, a bit like with the previous board. Not really believing that I've got it that easy. Is there a screw missing here? I see a screw under there, which is not really the right place for it. It's supposed to be a long screw with a, um, what do you call it, a threadless neck on it. So the right screw was in there. These are the right ones down here. They've got the broad head on them. Now, this is the incorrect screw for this position. That's just a standard board screw, which makes me worry now, because that means there is a long, um, a long fan screw somewhere, assuming all screws have been used and put back. That maybe it was this it here. No, nope, that's standard. Please don't be this one. Okay, thank goodness it's not that one. That's a shorty. Maybe it didn't get used. Yeah, I hate trying to get these out. There we go. So where did that screw go then? Oh, what happened there? Oh, that might have been scraping when trying to get that out. The battery, that is. Yeah. Interesting. No. Nope. Now the schematic is correct. The two twenty ohm um, value is correct. But your multimeter is reading the re value of that inductor that, uh, in DC mode, not in AC mode. 
It will only show the 220 ohms when it's in uh, dealing with an AC waveform at a certain frequency. Of which, whatever it was, rated at. Or maybe you were just being facetious and I didn't realise. In which case I apologise in retrospect. Might as well get this heatsink off in this case because we have to fix up that released hold down. By the way, that machine that we had last night, the 1466, with the display that was acting bad, badly, I did put the new DC inboard in, and it's all good. So it was definitely that. Plus, there were the other issues on the board. So it was a multi-fault board, as well as the MagSafe. But it was the MagSafe that was creating the primary fault that was being experienced. I might take that cap to just in case it picked up some collateral damage. See if I can get this off with soldering iron because I don't want the heat on to the connector of the screen. Though we do need to probably check that connector. This is probably semi welded, which is going to be a pain. schematic for the M1 or at least I don't think I have feel free to send them through although I'll be interested more in the board views Hey Greg, just realised you're there. Sorry to hear that you've got to go off and do other stuff. Stuff that's far less entertaining, I suspect. Although probably somewhat more profitable for you. Okay, 3662. What do you know? I've got some. Oh, the 1521, okay, yeah, I do have that. Yeah, I better check this one. I've, there's a probe point in that. No, that's more like it.
beautiful. Okay, Jim, I appreciate that you dropped in. Thank you very much. Always good to see you. Tell you what, it'd be lovely if this was the only fault on the board. Because that means I can pretty much just wash that with alcohol and a brush. And we're right to go again. Mind you, the poor thing is kind of looking like it could do with a nice, a, a good bath. developing there but so green on a u-shaped blue via rectangle Arnold G that often is actually the circuit board on those on the current sensors uh, resistors from the ashes in the documentation provided they already have checked the screen and the screen was confirmed as okay not to say it's still true but you know, the other possibilities they may have blown the cable as well as that inductor Paste that I wasted. I'm just going to put my stencils back into the stencil stencher, the stencil wash box. Right. We'll just pop this back into the board and s uh, into the chassis and see how it goes. Oh, right now we need to put that back on. Hey, Smiller. I trust the constant. Well, for this particular scenario, yes, I think it's um, it's not a problem because it came via another tech who could have made money from the situation. So, the fact that someone didn't make money from that gives me reasonable chance of belief that it's legit. Teeny tiny bit of lead in there. Ah, too difficult.
I'm looking right down the center, waiting for the center to melt and let me know that it's definitely done. Because right now I think it's just flux that's bobbling and making it seem like it's Crank this up a bit, unfortunately. And that's done. didn't melt it too bad, just one little smidge on the edge. Now uh, Barry, yeah this is the second one this week. The first one was my fault, this one wasn't. Noosa, yes, it can be done with the iron if you just get like a conical tip or something, or even just blob it, blob the tip of your iron with some solder and then rest it on the top of it. But I prefer to use the hot air because you've got a little more control of watching it when it sweats through properly and you don't get left with the dregs of solder up the top. But yes, you're absolutely right, you can do it with soldering iron. That's my damn mag safe. Alright Barry, I hope he doesn't give you too much grief because I'm about to fire this thing up shortly. And don't you wish ill on the board so that you don't have to miss out. I'm only plugging this in so it doesn't drift around anywhere and cause damage. Ugh, it's giving me enough grief as it is already now. Come on, there you go. If this goes ahead, then I'm heading off. Well, actually, I'm heading to sleep after this anyway. It's already late. Oh, this is okay. This is an alternate keyboard. What's that current? Current's good.
Oh shoot, no. Right, I don't know if you saw that, but uh, that just caught on fire. Alright. Fire. Much fun. Interesting, the cable does not take any damage. That is really bizarre. Or does it? Maybe it did. No, I'd say... Yeah, I don't know what's going on here. It could be the connector, actually. Could be this connector. Because remember, we had that bent pin one the other night. We've got damage connector. Yeah, oh, shoot. No, actually, that's my fault. Alright, that is weird. That is definitely... I've inserted that one way or another badly but that's kind of bizarre you'd normally feel that sort of thing you would normally feel if you created that sort of damage but clearly I must have I know I checked the underside of the cable before but did I check the top side I'm not sure Anyway, we already actually have another pin missing. I think. Is that? Hmm. Time to have a look at the edge of that board. Oh yeah, that was... Yeah, I saw the flames coming out of that one. You can see it's toasted. Yet, if you look at the connector, you would not spot that. Mm. Right. Okay, so it goes into, th oh, you can't see it, it goes into three pins, funnily enough, not the one that, oh, actually no, maybe it, no, no, ignore me, yeah, it goes into the first three pins there, so, hmm, let us test the diode mode with it. On its own. Point six four, you know, that's perfectly reasonable. Hey Crazy Jay, what are you apologizing? Yeah, the inductor's blowing because the screen's drawing too much power. But I don't know if it's the screen itself that's drawing too much power or if it's quite often the cable itself. Uh, you can get fatigue in the cable flex. So I do wonder if, um, in fact, what might have happened here is, well, it could have been coincidental when the person changed their battery that this happened. I don't know. Or maybe what happened is when they changed it, uh, maybe they installed something slightly wrong and it caused the cable to get damaged and now the cable is how could you say, um, returning the favour? <laughs> yeah, so we're going to plug this in. I have a feeling this is going to just... Uh, let's have a look at it under the microscope as we plug it in. Oh yeah, no, now it's starting to make sense. Okay, what I'm going to guess happened is that this was not... This connector perhaps was misaligned when he reconnected it. Because we've got the advantage of the microscope. We can have a look at the microscope as we insert it. And we can go, okay, that's in properly. 
when you're doing this freehand without the convenience of the microscope it's very easy to just be off by a smidge and you can bend up those pins so anyway let's have a look now I have a feeling this will actually be normal 4-1 okay that's actually normal I wonder if that diode's still uh, 0.06 let's have a look at resistance mode I wonder if the inductor still has any life left in it Well, it's gone from being 0 to 77. <laughs> Alright. Um, sorry, I don't know why I'm laughing. It's more work for me. <laughs> yeah, alright. So, I am basing my theory on the fact that we had the same response that they did. That what happened is when, he, when the connector was reinstalled, it was slightly off and it bent that pin. I'm not jumping it, damn you. I can do this now with the micro pencil and stuff because, or at least I think I can, ah. because I'm just using lead it already under there. Come on, man, make my day. Fine. Give myself some assistant 150 centigrade air. It's just enough heat there for me to be able to do it with a micro pencil. That's okay, we've got another three six six two. Amazing. Well, it's not that I trusted the customer. I'd say the real mistake here is that I didn't look at the connector properly before I put it back in. So it wasn't customer trust. It was laziness on my behalf. Edward, my opinion on hot tweezers is that they're one of those tools that seem like they should make your life so much easier and faster and better, but I think ultimately you don't use them as much as you thought you would. I think they've become a very expensive, use occasionally type device, a bit like a high-end uh, high DSO or scope and things like that. I know there are definitely some scenarios which are they're downright near invaluable, such as trying to gouge a cap, a CPU cap out from between others, typically say on an iPhone. Damn it, I've just lost my little string of solder then. That's, that's annoying me. So overall, I think they're a very handy device, but perhaps not worth the investment. Uh, Robin, you mean like when I was removing this inductor from the donor board? It just sometimes makes it, it easier to come up. Mostly because the donor boards and such, they use leaded sol uh, lead free solder. Whereas I'm using leaded solder, 
and let it solder this stuff. I think uh, flows at about 183 compared to 215, 218 or something like that on the lead free. So I'm basically just trying to get it to release earlier. Alright, so we've got 0.417 on the diode mode, so I think we might be alright this time. But what I will have to do is I will replace this cable. So even though I have been able to carefully place the cable and you know, get the pin to sit back into its correct position, it's not really going to be good of me to send this back in that state. The cable needs to be replaced. Unfortunately, on the 1502s and the 1398s, that's a fairly straightforward thing to do. You know, it's not a pain in the posterior like the 1466 and other screens. Let's try that again, shall we? Two amps. I haven't got a flame over yet. Yet. Hopefully I haven't done any... Ah, oh, I just realised something. Sorry, just excuse me. I forgot to hold down the option key. Still no flame over. We also don't have a bong though. Ah, oh, there we go. Damn it, it's got big sewer on it. Ugh, disgusting. I do have the speakers connected, so I'm assuming that maybe they've just disabled something. What's also problematic, we're not getting a progress bar here. Oh, I know why. I haven't... What is that? Is that a piece of hot glue? Did that just randomly attach itself? No, it's been there a while. Was that there before? Or was that something that's been picked up off my workbench? I think it must have been there before and I just didn't see it because it was underneath the heatsink. Right, put the heatsink back on give it a chance to actually run okay crazy j have you ever bothered listening i haven't no i am aware of it but i've never bothered to do it By the way, I will not be shipping this to the customer without redoing the thermal transfer paste and things like that. This is merely just so we can try and get the system to boot.
Just so I can run those utilities I have to give myself an idea of whether this is going to be a case of, yep, problem solved, or whether it's going to be a case of, we've got more faults ahead, Jim. What am I looking for now? I think that's pretty much it. I will plug the battery in as well. Let's get you out of the way. Ah. Oh. Now I know why. I was pausing because I was thinking, I've got one more screw to put in. I just couldn't remember what it was. And it was this fan screw. And I was reminded because when I flipped it over, the fan fell out. Yeah, Jason, I think I'll get someone else to do uh, screen jobs like that. I'll pass. Why are you not showing a progress bar? Thanks, Eddie. That's um, a lot of work ahead for us, but at least, you know, it's ours now, so thank goodness. <laughs> Walter White, just done a final test on the 1466 final webcam crack, as in the lens cover, or is, what? Okay, I don't know what this thing's doing. It's just staying there on the Apple logo. That is a bit ominous to me. Starting to make me think there's an SMC issue, which would not be unusual after a battery replacement. Hey, Sudi. Yeah. Yeah, well, yeah, sometimes people do silence the bomb, and it's not until you do the MV RAM reset that you get it back. Touchpad data line, that's the other one. Yeah, there's so many things here. Oh, here we go. We've got progress bar now. All right, it's not happy. There's a sensor or something that's gone way off because I can hear that the fan is just going bonkers. Three six six two. I wonder if I can actually run MRI on this. It might um, bring up something. <sighs> Ken, thank you very much for the five. I appreciate that. And thank you for the, well, you obviously yeah, buying flex board view. You've already given me your contribution, but I always appreciate more. I do need to get back into doing a lot more code with flex board view. There's a lot of backlog stuff. But as I've been telling everybody, until you know, we have the fluidity situation of... Ooh. Okay, this has not booted my stick. This has booted a... This has booted a password recovery by the looks of it. Yeah, password recovery. Yeah. I already know my own password, you morons. Yeah, we've got our bong back. Four amps, it's charging battery. So at least you know that function works. Alright, now it's behaving better. 
I think what might have happened is when I rapidly shut it off before because I could see the flames spitting out from the inductor, it was at a point where the OS was maybe doing something to the memory stick and it didn't like that. So I think it's okay. See if it can run Bally. Uh, BLX, you need help with your key. Alright. I presume you've sent me an email. I just haven't had a chance to see it, I guess. I'm not sure what this keyboard layout is, but it looks like um, Middle East. What do you call it? Is it Hebrew or is it. Um, Ah. What do you call this writing? Goes right to left. Um, you know, Iraq, Iran, United Arab, um, Arabic, Arabic. Is it no? Right, no. Excuse me. I'm making it absolute. It is Arabic. Ah, oh, duh. It's not Hindu Arabic. I know Hindu Arabic. Alright, so we're doing yeah, 30 40 frames per second, so that's not too bad considering this particular model does not have a GPU other than the built in one. So the 3662 is just an Intel chip only. Still, it's a 16 gigabyte i7. Wow, that's nice. Yeah, Iris Pro graphics. Alright, so that's actually doing good now. But, as I said, I'll have to order a new cable for the screen, replace that cable, because I don't trust that one, because the next person that disconnects that cable will not probably detect that it's got the dodgy pin, and uh, they will do exactly what I did. I'm gonna shut that down so we're good and I can get to sleep. Huzzah, because it's getting late. It's one o'clock and. Alright. Okay, well, that's it for tonight. I'm exhausted. You're bored. And I'm out of here. So thank you very much for watching and thank you for all the contributions tonight. Um, Barry, that's thank you for yours as well. Everybody, I'll have to go and report to my wife what's happened and she'll wonder whether I kind of like, you know showed a bit of a bit too many flesh tones or something we'll have to review the video maybe i did something that i didn't realize i'll perhaps catch you tomorrow i'm not sure we'll have to wait and see but until next time you'll take care i'll see you later